ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome back to the channel um we're gonna do it inside cold start <laughs> she sounded good as always boys and girls sounded good as always so the last video if y'all didn't see it i talked about the three ways to get your 5.7 Hemi into the 11s. This one, I'm gonna talk about how I got my 5.7 Hemi into the 11s. So stay tuned. y'all y'all saw it on the thumbnail heard it on that intro <laughs> we're going to talk about specifically how i got my 5.7 challenger shaker into the 11s and we're going to go uh over the price of parts i'm not going to talk about labor uh, because labor rates vary extremely widely you know across the country uh you know literally from town to town labor rates vary and plus, I did some work myself. I had some friends do some work for me at a highly discounted rate uh, and things like that. So I don't want to discuss uh, labor rates. We're just going to talk about parts uh, and how much, roughly how much those parts cost me. Because unfortunately, I was, I was uh, stupid and didn't keep track of all my, <laughs> all my receipts which I definitely should have. But anyway, so as my car started off stock, I was running mid 13s to low-ish 13s. Uh, mid, mid 13s on stock tires. And then when I got some uh, drag radials, it took her took it into the lower 13 you know still mid lower 13s depending on the weather and now i'm gonna preface this with <laughs> i got a lot of comments on the other one about da uh, the density altitude the density altitude does make a huge difference uh, especially in naturally aspirated uh setups like mine was so if you're living in an area where you're a couple thousand feet above sea level uh, you're already off to a bad start you're gonna have a tough time uh, tough time getting in the 11s and if you're in like those Colorado uh, 5,000 feet uh, you can pretty much forget even getting in the 11s um, at that altitude uh, you may be stuck in the high 12s low 13s uh, das Lamas, he has a, a pro-charged all-wheel drive charger, uh, and he runs mid to low 12s uh, with a pro-charger. So, uh, you know, the altitude, altitude alone is going gonna, is gonna to do a lot, but the density altitude uh, is also going to be a big player on whether you can actually make it to the 11s. So I'm going to preface it with this. Uh, when I ran my 11s, the DA was was definitely in the negatives for all of those runs. Uh, I ran, best run was 11.8 uh, at like 117, 115, uh, something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers. Uh, and that was in a negative 1900 DA. Literally, it was it was freezing it was like 30 some degrees uh, humidity was in like 40 percent i mean it, you couldn't get any more perfect condition uh, along with the track the track prep uh, was extremely good uh, so beginning of the season this year i ran a couple 11 nines again negative da wasn't that far negative <laughs> But they were in negative DAs, you know, negative 500 to, to like a negative 1,000, somewhere around in there. 
So DA will affect uh, whether you you will be able to make 11s. So if you're in a spot where you're in the, uh, consistently in those positive, you know, 2,000 DA, um, you're probably not going to hit 11s uh, with a 5.7, naturally aspirated. Um, unless you do some serious engine work, uh, you know, pistons, increasing the, uh, the compression, uh, and a lot of engine work. Uh, you could possibly get to the 11s. But, so that being said, good DA, you can get a 5.7 Hemi to run in the 11s, be it a Charger or a Challenger. And so let's get into it. So some of you OG folks already know all the modifications I did before, uh, before the Pro Charger. But I'm just going to go over the whole list. Uh, we'll put a price and the whole nine yards up there so you guys can see. So... My first modifications, uh, big power adder modifications, uh, was I did the Stage 2, Scat Pack Stage 2, uh, cam, lifters, and all of that. And then at the same time, I did Cook's Long Tube Headers and Cook's Green Catted High Flow Cats. So that was... I did two of them at the same time. Those were done at the same time. Uh, after those, and a tune, I'm sorry, and a tune. So after those modifications, I was running, you know, the low 13s, high, high 12s with those, with those modifications. And when I say high 12s, like 12, 8, 12, 9 in, the, in that area. And I'm trying to remember because uh, you know me, I do things on the fly. I don't, <laughs> I don't do any preparations. I just do them on the fly. But those are the first two mods. And, you know, they did me well. Got me a couple tents. From there, uh, I moved tuners. I went from my original tuner uh, to J Green. Uh, continue to stay in those high 12s, 12 8s, 12 9s, 12 uh, with those modifications. Um, and then I went to a 100 octane tune. Uh, I used Boostane to get me to, uh, to 100 octane. And, and that dropped me another couple tenths. So now we're getting into that mid ish 12s. 12, 6, 12, 7. Um, from there, I got uh, tires were a biggie. Tires took another tenth, almost two. So now we're in those mid 12s. And that's in good weather. Now, bad weather, you know, if I'm in the, you know, the 2000 DA level. I was running those high 12s. Good weather, mid 12s. So I'm going to caveat. I'm going to try and keep caveat that, uh, so everyone understands. You got to have good weather to make to make this happen. Uh, from there, uh, I got the Borla Attack Catback Exhaust. Uh, continued to tweak the tune. Stayed in those. Uh, mid 12s mid to low 12s uh, from there I got the torque converter now a high stall torque converter helped immensely uh, it literally dropped my 60 foot time I want to say it was two tenths two and a half tenths it was significant uh, which then again dropped my uh, quarter mile ET uh, from you know those mid 12s to consistently uh, low 12s and again perfect weather that's when I was hitting those 11 nines 
So you can do it without the torque converter, uh, but the torque converter does help, again, immensely. And those were, you know, the basic, oh, I'm sorry, the 392 intake manifold. I forgot that. I also did do that which uh, gives you a smoother torque curve, torque and power curve, and also gains power throughout both, both curves. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Oh, I also have a 87 millimeter ported MMX throttle body. Uh, I got that right, up, right after, now I'm going back thinking. I got that right after, uh, right after doing the the cam and the headers. Uh, and I also have a 160, uh, 160 degree thermostat as well. So all of those, and in the right conditions, your 5.7 Hemi will run 11s. I've, I've proved it. It's proven. Uh, but you gotta have the right conditions. <laughs> Like I said, if you're not in those right conditions, you're probably not going to hit 11s. Um, a lot of folks will say, too, I did get uh, ported heads uh, installed. Uh, that was more towards, uh, I want to say, that was more towards the middle of the year, like June, May, June, uh, somewhere in that time frame. I also did ported heads. And... Uh, you know, in that mid-season, the DA is in that 1,500, 2,000, uh, and I was running mid to low 12s uh, in that scenario with with the uh, the ported heads. So overall cost, uh, I don't have it off the top of my head right now. I'll make sure it's in the total cost uh, of the parts is in the uh, the list beside me here so again it's it's every bolt-on you can do uh, with a few internals uh, to make it happen so that's how you do it folks uh, it's not a it's not rocket science uh, many folks have done it uh, a lot of folks have done it uh, some folks uh, are actually starting to follow you know I'm not gonna call it my motto model uh, because there was people before me that did it. Uh, and I took most of my stuff from RT Life. Uh, so it's not like this model's a secret. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, it's not rocket science. Uh, all you got to do is slowly, uh, unless you got a huge bag of cash, uh, to do them all at once. Uh, me, I just did, you know, one modification here, two modifications there, and saved up did another one saved up did another one uh, and it took me uh, about three years to get all the NA mods and then it took me another year before I actually bit the bullet and uh, did the pro charge so from an NA perspective uh, that's the list that's the prices uh, if you got any questions feel free to hit me up on Instagram uh, I try to answer, uh, you know, everybody's questions uh, that hit me up on Instagram. It's starting to get a little, little overwhelming, but I, I still try and answer everyone on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, that's that's how I did it, folks. Like I said, if you got any questions, hit me up. Uh, if you got any suggestions on more videos, hey, just let me know. Uh, I'll do the research and uh, do a video on it. So that's going to do it for this one, folks. If you're stopping in for the first time, hey, go back, check out what's going on with the channel. Uh, if you like what's going on with the channel, uh, do me those few things. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, shoot me a comment, and then please go ahead, share this on your social media, uh, you know, to get a broader audience for the channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, we're doing really well this year. Starting off this year, we're starting off at a... At 2,500 folk, 2,500 subscribers. So let's see if we can uh, make that 5,000 by, say, let's say mid-year. So that's six months from now. Let's see if we can't hit hit 5,000 subscribers. So that's gonna do it for this, one, folks. Until next time.
Adios.